what we'll talk about today is 3DT and its role in the operative decision making with respect to the mitral valve. This is the, the 2006 American Association of Heart Association and ACC guidelines on valve disease, and there's been a bit of a paradigm shift. Now, for the first time in an asymptomatic patient without geometric remodeling of the left ventricle, there is now a fairly strong class 2A indication for uh, mitral valve surgery as long as there's a greater than 90% chance of mitral valve repair. And this even predates the multicenter European study that also showed early surgery of the mitral valve to be advantageous. And part of the reason for this shift and trend towards earlier surgery in mitral valve disease is data such as this from the Mayo Clinic. Other groups have shown similar data that mitral valve repair is superior to replacement. Uh, and you can see mortality benefits here for uh, posterior leaflet and bileaflet prolapse and a strong trend towards anterior leaflet prolapse. Now, despite this data that mitral valve repair is better than replacement, how are we doing as a society of caregivers? This is data from the Society of Thoracic Surgeons in the United States, and it shows us the rate of mitral valve repair for centers that do just a few mitral valve repairs a year compared to centers that are high volume in mitral valve repair. And certainly the high volume centers uh, get success in, as far as repair versus replacement more often than the low volume. But if you look at the data closer, just as many mitral valve surgeries in the United States occur at these centers of low volume as these centers of high volume. And consequently, we need to do a better job of getting more of these patients uh, to centers where they can repair the valve rather than replace it. And part of that is understanding what, why the valve is leaking and what's wrong with it. So three, four statements can be made. Mitral valve repair is superior to mitral valve replacement. There's now more liberal surgical referral of asymptomatic mitral valve regurgitation for surgery. The feasibility of repair depends on the anatomic lesions of the valve. And the surgeons are dependent on us, the echocardiographers and cardiologists, to determine the mechanism of that leak. And now there's emerging centers of excellence where if the valve repair is more tricky, we should send patients there rather than replacing them at centers of uh, low volume. Communication is very important when we deal with mitral valve repair, and most centers use the Carpentier nomenclature, where if we're looking at the mitral valve from the left atrial perspective, we can see the anterior leaflet above and the posterior leaflet below. And here's a direct uh, anatomic correlate. And we can divide it into the lateral region here, or P1 uh, for the posterior leaflet, and the medial region here, P3, with P2 being the middle scallop. And the corresponding re reasons of the anterior leaflet are the same. The commissures can be seen, and all these areas are important to describe with respect to mitral valve repair. So here's a typical example. We can use a multi-plane approach. You can see, indeed, there's a torn chordae in the upper left panel. It's a flail posterior leaflet. By looking at the long axis view and the commissural view at 60 degrees, we can see that indeed, and we're very confident that this is the middle scallop of the posterior leaflet that's flail, and indeed there's severe mitral regurgitation. This is a routine mitral valve repair. Pretty much any surgeon that does mitral valve repair can do this. It's not a tricky operation. But what if the mitral valve looks like this? And here's our 2D echo, and we'll go through a multi-plane approach. So in your mind, in the audience, which leaflet scallops prolapse and which are flail? Here's the zero degree view on the upper left. Here we have a 30 degree view. Once again, what's prolapsing? What's flail? We go through the full gambit here. We can see at the commissural view, very important view. But look, it's very complex. What's the pathology? We see multiple torn chordae here in the 90 degree view. And here's a long axis perspective. Once again, what's flail? What's prolapsing? What are we going to tell the surgeon? Do we need to refer this to a center of excellence for complex mitral valve repair? Well, here's what we said. We told the surgeon that there were multiple scallops prolapsing virtually the entire posterior leaflet and the middle scallop of the anterior leaflet. Two scallops were flail, and there were multiple torn chordae. But was I 100% confident based on the 2D echo at that point? Hard to know, and I work with some great surgeons at the Mayo Clinic, and fortunately this patient had an excellent result. We were correct in our description of the mitral pathology, and the patient underwent mitral valve repair. All right, so now this comes to the interactive part of the program. So keep in your mind, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna ask you what's wrong with this valve. Here we have a zero degree view. Note where we are in the omniplane approach. Here we are at the 30 degree view. I'll give you all the data all the 2D data, that is. 
Here we have the commissural view, the 60 degree view, a 90 degree view. What scallops prolapse? What's flail? What's wrong with the valve? And one final very long axis view at 130 plus degrees. We can see the torn cordae and the very severe eccentric jet of mitral regurgitation. So let's show a show of hands from the audience. Who says this is a P1 lateral scallop posterior leaflet? Middle scallop posterior leaflet. Medial scallop posterior leaflet. Middle scallop anterior leaflet. Who thinks this is a cleft mitral valve? Who thinks it's after lunch? Let's get on with the 3D echo. Well, let's go on. Here's the 2D echo. Based on, I mean, here's 3D echo. Based on the 2D echo, I would have said this is a flail posterior middle scallop. But here's the 2D echo, and sure enough, when we look at this valve from the left atrial perspective, we do indeed see the middle scallop of the posterior leaflet coming right back at us. There are multiple torn chordae on that. We get a hint that there may be a little crevice right here, though, however. Not much anterior leaflet pathology. But the beauty of the 3D echo data set is once you capture it, you can look at it from multiple perspectives. Usually this is an on phos view from the left atrium, but if you flip it around and now look at an on phos view from the left ventricle, very clearly a cleft is seen here between P1 and P2. Remember, we're looking at it from the other side, so this is the lateral scallop in this view. Now, here's the surgical report. Indeed, that's what they found, a flail middle scallop, but there was also a cleft. Now, our surgeons are probably good enough at Mayo to recognize that even in the absence of echo. But I'll put it to you that there are many surgeons outside of uh, certain centers of excellence that would not recognize that. And they would depend on the echocardiographer to provide that data. It altered the surgical approach. They had to put in an additional stitch in addition to the classic correction of a flail posterior leaflet. This was doubly important in this case. As I said, this patient had both a cleft and a flail leaflet because this was a robotic repair, and the future of mitral valve repair is very often these minimally invasive robotic approaches. And although the visualization of the mitral valve is great, and, and the stitch that's put in are usually the same as it goes with conventional repair, knowing the anatomy ahead of time can be critically important to planning out the surgical approach. Now, we looked at this uh, in a very head-to-head uh, uh, -head kind of fashion, 2D echo versus 3D echo in a blinded fashion at the Mayo, we looked at it to determine was 3D TE in the operating room better than 2D TE? And other groups have shown that it is the case. However, with real-time TE, we can get quick data with data acquisition in under a minute and interpretation in under a minute. Unlike previous 3D TE techniques, which took 10 to 15 minutes and not really uh, applicable to the OR. So that's exactly what we did. We compared 2D to 3D echo in 42 consecutive patients prospectively undergoing mitral valve repair. Uh, the results were blinded. We used uh, uh, particular vendors, live 3D uh, TE probe. Uh, we then, in a blinded fashion, had imagers look at the 3D image and the 2D image and try to assign what the mechanism of the mitral regurgitation is and the full leaflet pathology. The gold standard was the surgeons. And here's the data, it was a diverse data set. You can see that most common lesion was indeed a P2, uh, middle scallop of the posterior leaflet, but there was significant bileaflet involvement, uh, cordal rupture, even a, a couple perforations. It was a diverse group of patient pathology. It took us about a minute to collect the data, and uh, it was available in all patients from both 2D and 3D perspective. With respect to the 3D data set, we considered it optimal in 36% of the patient and good in 33%. You know, this is almost 80% of the patient had excellent quality data. And the remaining had satisfactory imaging with 100% feasibility of the 3D imaging. 2D imaging was also feasible in all patients. And here's the data, and I won't digress to the individual leaflet pathology too much, but do note that both are very good, 2D and 3D, but there are certain uh, portions of the mitral valve that are seen better with 3D, specifically the lateral scallop of the posterior leaflet and the anterior leaflet. So to understand the full under gambit of what's wrong with the mitral valve, 3D was superior to 2D.